Hello everybody, this is Ogreboy and I'm going to be doing my review for the 2008 movie, The Incredible Hulk. This is the second movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and is directed by uh, Louis Leterrier and in this movie Bruce Banner becomes the Hulk after an experiment with the military goes wrong and they're trying to reinvent the super soldiers program which is where Captain America comes from and they're trying to reinvent it and uh, due to gamma radiation he becomes the Hulk and it goes on the run and is trying to hide from the military and find a cure for himself Bruce Banner is and uh, eventually it all comes down to him having to face off against the abomination who was also created using the same stuff that created the Hulk um, in another failed experiment um, this movie is alright it's never been a movie that I've been a big fan of I have some moments in here that I like I love the the whole scene when the Hulk is going on the rampage and at the college campus I love that scene and the big final battle with him and abomination is kind of fun to watch even though it looks terrible because the CGI is really really awful in this movie um, I will say that the big final battle was still is still fun to watch and everything watching these two CGI monsters go against each other it's still kind of fun and everything but um, this one is known as the black sheep of the MCU because it, it uh, aside from a cameo from Tony Stark and a few little references here and there this movie doesn't really have a lot of connections to the MCU they're slowly starting to make more connections to it in recent stuff and everything but for the longest time Marvel kind of ignored this one and I think part of it is due to the rights issues with Hulk still being owned by Universal and because this one is the least one of the least successful MCU movies I don't know if it still is but at least for a long time it was and a lot of people consider this to be one of the worst MCU movies uh, um, and I can completely understand why because this doesn't have that MCU feel to it at all and everything they play it more straight and serious and everything you could tell they were trying to be a little bit darker with the story and everything and uh, because of movies like Batman Begins and stuff they were trying to be darker with the storytelling and, and I think that some aspects of it work um, I like the whole suspense aspect of what what the Hulk is gonna look like and stuff they, they kind of did a good job with that and like keeping him in the shadows throughout most of the movie which is probably for the better seeing that the CGI looks so bad keeping him in the shadows where you can't see him very well worked a lot better to me um, I will say the cast for the most part is pretty good except for our lead actor I, I just don't really care for Edward Norton as Bruce Banner he, uh, I never really have from the get-go I just felt like he was miscast as Bruce Banner and everything and of course they recasted him a few years later for the Avengers with Mark Ruffalo and he's been Hulk ever since so uh, this one kind of stands out like a sore thumb with with him being being the, being Bruce Banner and stuff and I just I'm not that huge on on his take on the character I don't think he's terrible or anything there were way worse performances in other movies and stuff but he just he's not very great for Bruce Banner to me I just I, I don't dig him um, I will say though that I liked uh, Liv Tyler as Betty Ross I thought she was fine and uh, Tim Roth is the abomination uh, was, was a pretty fun villain he did a did a pretty decent job playing him uh, playing Emil Blonsky and the abomination I think he did a fine job um, and everything I, I think it's cool we're finally starting to see him get get more of a more time to shine and stuff I'm curious to see what they do with him and she Hulk and stuff but it, it's cool they're finally coming around to give maybe give him 
hopefully he'll get a redemption because he's not super great but he's an okay villain just kind of mediocre which a lot of the villains in the first few phases of the Marvel movies are kind of just mediocre and he's definitely one of the most mediocre ones um, but he was fine and I really liked William Hurt as Thunderbolt Ross I think he did a, a pretty good job playing him and everything uh, and he plays him a few more times in the MCU and stuff unfortunately he passed away this year so we probably won't see him again as Thunderbolt Ross unless he film some stuff already but uh i really enjoy the stuff we do see of him in this franchise and i thought he was really good in this movie and the relationship between him and uh him and betty is is pretty well written and stuff but <coughs> but yeah all in all i think the, the incredible hulk is just uh, flat out okay. It's not entertaining or super great. Every time I watch it, I kind of have trouble getting through it because of how slowly paced the movie is and stuff. But when we get to action scenes, they they work pretty well. So it uh, I'll be fair and say I'd give The Incredible Hulk a, a five out of ten. That, that's one one point higher than I used to give it because I do get some enjoyment out of it nowadays but it just isn't one of my favorites it I only watch it if I'm going through the MCU movies and that's what I'm gonna be doing with these Marvel Mondays is going through all the MCU movies till I've and finally to the whatever the last one is by the time I get to it but I, I love this franchise and stuff and this one is definitely not one of the better movies in the franchise it's uh, been my least favorite for a long time I don't know if I still say it's my least favorite movie in the franchise or not um, we'll see when I do my re-ranking after reviewing all these but for right now it's still my least favorite and everything so uh, yeah so anyway let me know in the comments what you think of the Incredible Hulk and I hope you enjoyed this video and have a good day everybody